So first up is a 1939 Jefferson Nickel. Now, sorry I took a couple days off. Uh, man, really, really busy behind the scenes. So I do not like taking days off uh, of uploading videos. Usually I would like to upload every day. Uh, that's, the, that's what I usually do, so sorry for that. All right, 1939, this coin has been double struck and rotated in collar. Now, from a distance, you probably wouldn't even notice, you know, if you come across this, you know, pocket change or spending it or whatever, but you can really see here on the reverse, the design, how it has been double struck. You see the outline of the design there going through the reverse design. Of course, that design's rotated. We see some of the lettering here. And then also here on the front, we see that taking place as well. The outline of Jefferson going through the other Jefferson. So this coin here sold for over $495 and nearly a $500 nickel. Next up is a 1943 Jefferson nickel. Now these coins are 35% silver and it does have a mint error. It's got a strike through error taking place here on the reverse. So we can see that pretty clearly here on the back of the coin. Uh, this coin is in excellent condition, by the way. It is graded at a mint state 67, so that gives it a lot of value as well. This coin sold for over $115. Over 100 bucks for a nickel. All right, this coin here is a 1943 as well. However, this is the S mint mark. Now, this coin was supposed to be a silver nickel. You can see the S mint mark, the big S here on the reverse of the coin. Now, it looks strange, you know, it kind of looks damaged, but you can see that the design is being cut off of this Jefferson nickel. The lettering here around the rim of the coin, on both sides, the obverse and reverse. And that's because this coin was actually struck on a steel planchet. When they produced the steel pennies, this is actually a steel planchet that one of those pennies was supposed to be struck on. However, a Jefferson nickel design was struck on that steel one cent planchet. So that will give the coin a lot of value. This coin here sold for over $2,900. Again, nearly a $3,000 coin there. Now this one here is pretty cool. It's actually a broken planchet, and this is on the 1952 Jefferson nickel, which is really cool. You see that crack going all the way down. Uh, the middle of the nickel. We see that here on the reverse as well. Really awesome. Some people may think that's damaged, but this is actually a real mint error taking place here. And this coin here sold for over $180. This next nickel here is pretty similar to the other one that we looked at. It's a 1959 D mint mark. It is a strike through error taking place, struck through fragments. We see that here on the hair of Jefferson. And then if we go here on the reverse, we can see that as well. So pretty interesting error there. This coin here sold for over $70. So nothing too valuable, but still 70 bucks. All right, this one here is cool because it would definitely probably, you know, blend in with some damaged coins out there. Now it was actually struck on a split planchet. So it's a 1960 D mint mark. Really, really awesome, man. Look at that. 1960 and this coin sold for over $90. Almost a hundred bucks for the nickel. So not too bad for that one either. All right, here it is, the 1963. <laughs> now this one's pretty cool. I've talked about this in some previous videos. So this coin here has a retained staple struck through it. Check that out right there, man. That's actually when the coin was produced, a staple got in the way there, and that's the result of it. You know, this has happened on other coins, which I've shown in other videos, but this 1963 nickel sold for over $550. Moving on to a 1964. Now this coin here obviously has a huge indent. We barely could see that 1964 date as it almost got cut off. Good thing it didn't though. And this nickel here sold for over $130. Now this one's really cool. I love, you know, uh, die cap errors on really any type of coin. I just think they're really cool looking. This coin here, you can obviously see that the error speaks for itself. And because of that mint error, this nickel sold for over $270. Here's a really extreme type of error. Of course, you know, finding something like this in pocket change would be like hitting the lottery. It's a 1970 D mint mark. It's been struck three times 
off center and we can clearly see that there in the images displayed this jefferson nickel sold for over 490 dollars now here is a cud taking place on a Jefferson nickel. You can look for cuds on all kinds of different uh, coins. So it is an obverse die break is uh, the correct term for it, but people call them cuds. It is the 1974 D mint mark. And we see that taking place at the bottom of the Jefferson nickel. And this Jefferson nickel sold for over $110, $100 nickel. Here's a Jefferson nickel from 1975 that was double struck. It is the D mint mark. Again, these types of errors, you know, speak for themselves, pretty noticeable. This coin here sold for over $130. All right, this next Jefferson nickel from 1989 has been broad struck out of collar. We see that there again, very, very noticeable and visible error. So you won't need a coin microscope for anything like this. You know, these are pretty noticeable. This coin sold for over $80. Same thing with this, you wouldn't need a coin microscope for this. Uh, it's been quadruple struck, pretty uh, self-explanatory there. And it's a 1998 Jefferson nickel, and this coin sold for over $900. So man, always be on the lookout for double strikes, off centers, things like that. Here, this next one is a 1990D Jefferson nickel that was struck through a late cap die. Now that's the penny that I found. It was struck through a, a you know a late cap die, so that one's pretty cool. Uh, you can see that there taking place on the front of the coin. Here on the reverse, looks totally normal. So this coin here sold for over twenty-five dollars. So not really worth getting graded, uh, but it's a twenty-five dollar coin. Now here is a really uh, uh, cap die here. Now this is the obverse was struck through a cap die. And obviously you cannot make out uh, you know, any of the design here on the front. You can kind of see the outline of Jefferson's head there at the top. But here is the reverse. Looks pretty normal. So always flip over both sides of your coins, of course. This coin here sold for over $40. So nothing you know, too valuable, but still a really, really awesome coin to uh, always look out for is cap die coins. Now here's a couple other Jefferson nickels that are worth money. This is how many they made in 1950 for the Jefferson nickel. So the 1950 no mint mark, they made 9.7 million. And then the 1950 D is a really key dated coin here that you always wanna look for because they only made a little over 2.6 million of those coins. So here's an example of a 1950 D. If we go to the reverse, you could see the mint mark there to the right of the coin. That is where you wanna look for the D mint mark. Now this is a very, very high graded coin here and that's why it's really valuable, of course, because it's also a 1950D as well. So it's a key date to look for. It's got some really nice toning on the coin also. Now this coin sold for over $17,000. It also has full steps on this nickel as well. And I have discussed that in my other nickel videos, so be sure to go check those out on my channel. Now this is a really cool one. This one sold on eBay. Now this is a whole collection of Jefferson Nickels from 1938 to 1961. So this person has all the nickels, even the silver nickels from 1942 to 1945. This whole collection here from 1938 to 1961, these coins sold for over $310. So that is pretty cool. If you fill up a whole book like this, which I'm about to show you my book here in a minute, then you're looking at a little over 300 bucks. So not too bad. And of course, it always depends on the coins conditions as well. Now here are some 1950 nickels that sold on eBay. As you see the top one there, that's what we just looked at the book for over $300. And then we also see to the right a row of 40 1950 nickels for over $280. Now we see this one that's graded in a coin slab by NGC. That coin sold for over $285 because of that mint state 67 grade, as well as having five full steps. So always be on the lookout for the 1950D Jefferson nickel. Now here is the 1950 Jefferson nickel with no mint mark. Now this one is graded at a mint state 65 with full steps and it only sold for a little over $90. However, if we look at the same exact coin graded at a mint state 67 with full steps, 1950 no mint mark with some amazing toning to the coin, this coin sold for over $4,900. So it really does depend on the grade of the coin 
and other factors as well that we've discussed in numerous other Queen videos on my channel. All right, guys, don't forget to subscribe in the middle. Check out the videos to the left of me, and until tomorrow, I will see you on the comment section below. This is Couch Collectibles, and this is where I disappear.